Oh, here we are, Friday, October 4th, 2024. I'm Larissa. It's time to drink the skulls. So, there's this person who's giving me a hard time, and she's doing it on purpose to be shitty. And now I wonder if she's, in fact, the person who pulled the bullshit already. So, it's just, women, this is why I don't have women friends. Because I can't stand women. I can't stand the way women relate to each other. I can't stand, like... I just, I don't have time for it. I don't enjoy it. I don't respect it. I don't, the, the, the passive aggressive, petty, catty, picky, picky bullshit. I just don't, I just, I just don't have the patience for it. I don't have the, uh, It doesn't amuse me. Like, I, 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 I don't know. It's just, it's never made sense to me. It's why I've never had girlfriends. It's why. Because I don't roll like that. And oh, God. I just, I just don't, I'm not, ma I'm, I'm not made that way. My brain doesn't work that way. So, you know, so, you know, So, you know, anyway, yeah. I think the answer is my second e-newsletter is going to have to go out early. I think that's what the answer is. I think that's what the answer is. So. Yeah, I do. So I guess I'll have to work on that today, huh? Hmm. Yeah. I do. That is what I'm going to have to work on today. Getting the second one out. Hmm. You know... I'm just, I'm a one woman show. I am. I do all of my own work. I do all of my own research. I do all my own editing. And it's like, it's hard. I don't catch everything all the time, right? Like, I'm pretty damn good, but I don't catch everything all the time. And it's like, whenever I miss something that people, that, it's, that has to be picked at, it's like, geez, okay. Yeah, I know. I caught it before you did. How about that? I caught it before you did. It was too late, but I caught it. <laughs> and um, I do it all by myself. And you don't do a fraction of this. And you got a team behind you. So, you know. Mm. It's just. <sighs> I was telling Omar last night. Not last night, but the night before. I had a dream. 
about my grandma. I have a dream about my grandma. It was such a weird dream. It was such a weird dream. So I had in, in this dream, my grandma and I are in this room talking to each other. And in the dream, in the dreamscape, like I can understand what she's saying, but in, from the lucid perspective, it all just sounds like gibberish to me, right? Like there's these scenes in Twin Peaks when they're in the red room. It was kind of like that, right? Where it's like, garbled and, and gibberish and so we're having this conversation my sister my little sister is standing there looking dopey and my grandma's like really angry about her and I and, she, and my it's like we're having this I, it's like we're like, like we're having this conversation like what do we do about this and then we we walk through a door laterally and we end up in you know I'm, I'm look I'm looking at that looking at it now so my grandparents basement was split in in half or in thirds one third was the garage right and that was a separate closed off room and then there was a door off of that off of the off of the room that where the car you pulled the car in and it was a real tight fit if you had a sedan and <clears throat> Went, you went in the door, there was like a screen door and then another lightweight door and you go that, you go in that door and you'd be in this like finished part of the basement. It was like a little living room and they had, it's where their, their record, their old record player was down there and there was an old TV and the sleeper sofa. God, that plaid sleeper sofa. Oh my God. And a couple of my pappy's bookshelves and a couple the, um, the end tables, the, uh, oh, oh, those, those, those mid-century modern end tables that they had. They had one, mid, one, the one, one that was those, the double tier and the other one was a round double tier with a, with a lamp in it. Anyway, the, under the stairs, there was a, a little room and that wall was covered. My grandfather had covered it with, with wainscoting. And then on the other side, there were, there were two doors that went to the other side of the downstairs. And there was a, there was a toilet down there and the laundry room. And I think the first part of the dream, we were in the laundry room area looking at it now because there were those windows around. There was the refrigerator where the Schweppes ginger ale was. Yeah. And we, so we, we were, we were talking in there, in that part of the, of the basement. And then we moved over into the finished part of the basement and under the stairs, there was this, this, this little like storage closet and that wall was covered with wainscoting and the door into the storage closet was kind of like hidden in the wainscoting kind of thing. Like you didn't see it right away. And there was like a, um, picture I had two horse heads on it and it was like wood burned and stained and then stained right and we were in front of that and I have this afghan see it over there that afghan <clears throat> that my aunt died I made and in the dream the afghan was gigantic it was huge it was bigger than that it was like 10 times bigger than that, that afghan it's gi ginormous it is it is like it is more than 10 foot by 10 foot it is big Anyway, it was even bigger. It was like four or five times bigger than that. And my, my grandma and I are all rolled up in this Afghan. And, and it's like, and my sister Mary, she's like buried at the very bottom. Like she has to be smothered and dying because she's, she's underneath. My grandma's on top and she, the way that it's all like wrapped up together, it's like she's propped up in it and wrapped up in it. And I'm wrapped in the outer layer and I'm all like tied down, like, tied down. I can't move. It's just my head that's out. Right. Well, my mom comes down the stairs into the basement and my grandma 
is puking. Like she is just throwing up and throwing up and throwing up. And the whole Afghan is like saturated with vomit and the floor is covered in vomit. I mean, it's, it's like this, uh, there's no way that this much vomit would come out of one person. It's like impossible. Not unless, you know, like, and like I'm, the, the, the blanket is like all saturated in vomit. And the only thing that on me that is not like in the vomit is my face, right? And I can't move. And my mom's like saying, says to my gosh, what's the matter, mom? And my grandma's like, I don't know. I just keep throwing up. And she's like, bleh, bleh, bleh. And then I woke up. Weird friggin' dream. Yeah. Not last night, the night before. Yeah, I was telling her more about that last night. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway. So I'm starting to form the January issue of the magazine. And, um, yeah, yeah, people are kind of weird, huh? Yeah, I have my soft, I did a soft open yesterday, nobody came in. Oh, I'll do soft, I'll be soft open again today, but I need to get that. Second e-newsletter out early. That just pisses me off. But the thing is, is I don't know how the typo got there to begin with because it's not what I typed. It's not. And <clears throat> I think somebody at Wix fucks with my stuff because they have before, right? Wix and Vistaprint, they're all connected. And they fucked with my website before. There was bullshit with my website before. So I think somebody's fucking with me is what I think. I think that my stuff was changed. Yeah. Wouldn't be the first time. No, it would not be. Would not be the first time. Anyway. Yeah, I'll work on that. I'll work on that e-newsletter today. Yeah, I'm going to have to get it out today, huh? Maybe I'll get it out tomorrow morning. Yeah, maybe I will. Yeah. So... Anyway, 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 yep. So I saw something in the strike has, has potentially come to an end. The Longshoreman strike. Did they, did I, did I, did I see that correctly? Did I see a headline that they have reached a tentative agreement? Yeah, uh, CNN is like, I right, angry about automation. I right, angry about AI. Yeah, it'll be like agriculture. It'll be like what they did to ag agriculture. Yeah, not necessarily better, huh? I don't know. It it'll be interesting, particularly given um, you know more automation that happens at at docks and things. I mean, there's a couple things that'll happen. It'll mean one people who work at the docks are going to have different ha going to need to have different kind of training and skills because they're going to have to learn how to interface with the with the technology, right? And it's going to eliminate a lot of bodies because of you know machines can be built to be a lot stronger than people, right? Lifting and moving things, um, but 
I also wonder what is it going to mean for, for containers that have people in them, um, that are being smuggled into the country? Um, what is automation going to do for that? Is it, you know, there's a, there's a couple things it could mean. It could mean higher death rate because people being left in crates longer, right? Um, or it could mean, um, less trafficking because people, uh, would be more, maybe more easily caught, right? There's, be, there'd be less with, with fewer people working the dock. It would mean that there would be less opportunity for somebody being on the take on the trafficking side, um, being able to you know, allow people in because there's always that, that kind of thing, right? There has to be somebody on the inside to let you in, right? To get, to, to, to get your property, to get your peeps, the people that you bought, the people that you, that you trafficked in, right? They got to let the coyote in, right? They got to let the trafficker in. Somebody on the inside has to let the trafficker in and say, oh, we, they're here. We found them, Right? So, I don't know, it'll be interesting to see how it affects the human trafficking aspect of, of shipping. Um, and I can also understand, you know, people being like, oh my God, all these people with jobs, you know, eliminate so many of our jobs. I get it. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. But keep buying your Teslas, right? Ah. <sighs> And you just gotta, as an individual, like, what do you do about any of it as an individual? Try to do the best you can and try to make, try to make informed decisions and reasoned decisions about everything, you know? Anyway, Brody went to the gallery with me yesterday. He does not like buses. It was weird. He'd never seen a bus before. <laughs> yesterday, he saw three buses and he had a fit each time and they were all very different buses. <laughs> but he was not happy. He was not having it. He, I mean, it was angry bark. And I, you know, I had to calm down. Be like, it's okay, Brody. Buses are allowed to drive by. It's a bus. He's like, oh. He did not like the buses. Did not like the buses. Oh, my God. And then there was a one couple. Like people were driving up and down the street. People parked in the 24-minute spot that's right in front of my place. And, uh, you know, a number of times. But there was one couple he did not like. And I'm not sure if it was them or the car that he did not like. The car had a really bad paint job. And he was just like, he was not having it. <laughs> he was like, ah. He's like, Mom, look at that car. The paint job's really bad. <laughs> like, I'm like, what is wrong with you, dude? Because that's the only thing that I can, I can, there was, I mean, there was nothing about the couple. It was, it was an older couple. He helped his wife get out of the car. The only thing I can think is Brody did not like the paint job. And it was a bad paint job. But I'm like, I wasn't going to bark at the door. It's a bad paint job. Brody was having a fit about that. I'm like, oh my gosh. The rims were painted red. They were painted red. They weren't anodized. They weren't anodized. They weren't powder coated. They were painted. And it looked really bad. Oh my God. I don't know what it was. I, can't, I don't even know what the car was. It wasn't a boat or anything. It was an older car. It was like late seventies, early eighties, something. Right. Yeah. I don't know. It had that, it had those, those sharp edges, those sharp edges that you saw on, on stuff in the late seventies and early eighties. Mm. It was black and red. Those those rims, those rims, the rims and the hubcaps—they were painted red. It's like, whoa! Somebody's nephew did that <laughs> for free. <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> anyway, Brody didn't like it. I'm like Brody. Brody, you got to bark about real stuff. 
these are the things you can bark about. You can't be barking at buses. If you can't get over the buses, buddy, you can't be gallery dog. But he was all excited yesterday. I said, you want to be gallery dog? And he was like, yes. <laughs> he was real funny. He's a real funny dude. He's a real funny little dude. He's not little. He's a big dude. He's a big dude. And he takes up a lot of room on the bed. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. 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 <sighs> anyway, I gotta get going.